Good morning, and welcome to today's summer worship service of the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Amy Pop, and I serve this congregation as its lifespan religious educator. We welcome all of you to our service this morning, especially those of you who are searching for a welcoming home for your mind, body, and spirit. We hope you find one here. Whether it's your first time in a worship with us or your hundredth time, we hope that you'll find here ideas and questions that stretch you and liberal values that challenge you to join us in loving boldly, living justly, and welcoming all to the table. In that spirit, we welcome and honor the people of the Peoria Nation who lived their lives on this land so long ago. Our worships this summer take us to the movies, reflecting on iconic films and searching our hearts and minds for the meanings and lessons to be found within them and our current culture. As always, this congregation continues to be sustained by the care, talents, and generous gifts of our members and friends. If you'd like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or the slide at the end of the service. Now, let us enter into worship. May the force be with you. And also with you. Lift up your lightsabers. We lift them up to the rebellion. We cast away the spirit of Jar Jar, bringer of mindless chatter and unnecessary anecdotes. We call forth the spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi, patient teacher and speaker of riddles. Come, spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi, come. We call forth the spirit of Yoda, ancient teacher of wisdom. 
Come, spirit of Yoda, come. We call forth the spirit of Padme, strong and fierce leader of nations and mother. Come, spirit of Padme, come. We call forth the spirit of Han Solo, determined friend and defier of odds. Come, spirit of Han Solo, come. We call forth the spirit of R2-D2, humble in service and great of heart. Come, spirit of R2-D2, come. The force is truly with us. In a sign of community and mutuality, let us all wave as a sign of sharing the force with one another. Today's chalice lighting comes from the Reverend Leslie Takahashi. She writes, All that we have ever loved and all that we have ever been stands with us on the brink of all that we aspire to create. A deeper peace, a larger love, a more embracing hope, a deeper joy in this life we share. Luke Skywalker and the Deep Truth Luke Skywalker grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere, raised by his aunt and uncle. He always thought he was a pretty ordinary kid, but with the help of his friends, Princess Leia and Han Solo, he became a powerful Jedi Master who went on to fight the evil Empire. Later he taught a powerful boy named Ben Solo who made a different choice about what to do with his power. Ben used that power for the dark side, and Luke was devastated. He spent years blaming himself for Ben's decision. But many years later, another powerful student named Ray came to ask Luke for help. She needed him to teach her how to use the Force so that she too could help the Resistance fight the evil Empire. In helping Rey learn how to use her power, Luke came to understand one deep truth. Even though Luke had felt responsible for Ben's turn to the dark side, it had been Ben's choice. You can have all of the power in the world, but it's up to you to choose how to use it. There are lots of things we can learn from Star Wars, but today's takeaway is this. None of us are Jedis, and most of us are pretty ordinary. But power, the force of life and strength, runs in each of us, and it's up to us to choose how to use it. May we all choose to use our power to bless the world. Good morning. We begin our shared joys and sorrows with an invitation from Reverends Wendy Bartell and Lynn Gardner. From our separate joys and struggles, we come here to find the peace of balance, to find the blessing of restlessness. All are welcome to follow, to lead, to teach, to learn, to join in the dance, to catch our breath. All are welcome to give generously to receive gratefully, all are welcome. If we are steady and composed, if we feel completely lost, if we don't know what we are feeling, this time in this community has a place for us. Here we matter and here we are loved. If you are steady and poised, if you feel completely lost, if you don't know what you feel, this time in this community is a place for us. We matter. We are loved. This is the time for sharing the joys and sorrows of our congregation. We honor the sorrows by offering our heartfelt sympathy to Geneva Becker and all other family and friends of Kenny Bloyd who passed on July 7, 
at age 64. For this sorrow and for all other joys and wishes for health, we offer the embrace of our circle of care. Let us also hold all that is in our lives and on our hearts in the care of this moment. Let us pause and share the quiet together. Amen. Spirit of life, God of many names yet beyond all naming, we give thanks for the joys among us today and all who will partake of this worship service later. We hold in loving care all those with sorrows and concerns for friends and loved ones and for our hurting world. Fear, pain, and the reality of the world's evils weigh heavily on many of our hearts. So we give thanks today for this congregation and the many others like it, where we are reminded again and again that love is stronger than hate. When we grow disappointed in ourselves, in the ways maybe we haven't been our best selves, remind us that the force of life and strength Wisdom and kindness is in each of us, and there's nothing we can do or fail to do to blot it out. Remind us that we are loved, and that the same love that holds us will never let anyone else go either. This morning we give thanks for this strong yet tender, challenging yet comforting, hallowed yet quirky church community where all are loved as we are, but too much to let us stay that way. And we give thanks again and again for all in our world, both past and present, who use their force, their power for good, who bear witness to grace and love and mercy, who live out their faith, whatever it is, not by fighting what they hate, but by saving what they love. These and all things we pray for love's sake. Amen. A reading by Reinhold Niebuhr. He writes, Nothing worth doing is completed in our lifetime. Therefore, we are saved by hope. Nothing true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we are saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we are saved by love. No virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint of our friend or foe as from our own. Therefore, we are saved by the final form of love, which is forgiveness. So ends our reading.
Sometimes it feels like everything in the world is on our shoulders, doesn't it? I remember political ads last year that made it feel like my donation, my one vote would make the difference between my candidate winning or losing. For well over a year, we all had to scrutinize every decision we made about going out anywhere, whether to see the doctor or go for a walk. We lived with the worry that the wrong choice of face mask, going to the grocery store or carry out restaurant at the wrong time, or lingering too long to catch up with our mail deliverer might make us catch the virus. Even our own Unitarian Universalist faith has a big focus on individual choice and agency. Most often, changing the world and work for justice are framed in terms of our personal choices, our willingness to make change in our own lives and habits. In this way, it can sometimes feel a bit like we're the last Jedi, like justice and peace and goodness will all just fall apart if we don't keep on keeping on. Now, I absolutely believe that our choices matter that each of us has something important and unique to offer this world. But I also think this idea that people are completely independent, autonomous individuals, and that everything's on our shoulders alone, only serves those who don't want us to find our collective power. It's a worldview we can't afford to assume as gospel any longer. Luke Skywalker teaches Rey a similar lesson in The Last Jedi. Master Skywalker, we need you to bring the Jedi back because Kylo Ren is strong with the dark side of the Force. Without the Jedi, we won't stand a chance against him. What do you know about the Force? It's a power that Jedi have that lets them control people and make things float. Impressive. Every word in that sentence was wrong. Lesson one, sit here, legs crossed. The Force is not a power you have. It's not about lifting rocks. It's the energy between all things, the tension, the balance that binds the universe together. Okay. But what is it? Close your eyes. Breathe. Just breathe. Reach out with your feelings. What do you see? The island. Life. Death and decay that feeds new life. Warmth. Cold. Peace. Violence. And between it all. Balance and energy. A force. And inside you. Inside me. That same force. And this is the lesson. That force does not belong to the Jedi. To say that if the Jedi die, the light dies is vanity. Can you feel that? Sometimes it might feel like the evil empire is winning and the resistance is losing strongholds. All sorts of things in our world are changing right now. Authoritarianism threatens democracy, not only in the United States, but in many countries around the globe. Powerful institutions that have been around for a long time and fought against injustices of many kinds are fading in their influence. News and journalism in the midst of, is in the midst of changing forms once again. But just as the news is bigger than newspaper or magazines or blogs, just as democracy is bigger than any one government, no institution or political party or church or other organization 
owns the power that lifts up those whom the world brings low, the power that fills the hungry with good things and topples the mighty from their thrones. That power that we recognize as inherent in every human being, that power that is so often born to the poor and the ordinary, that power that surges in crowds marching for freedom and colleagues unwilling to sit by and allow injustice to continue on their watch. That power flows in all of us as surely as the force does in Star Wars and it flows strongest and best when we come together in shared purpose and community. When I was a teenager, I joined hundreds of other youth in Nashville, Tennessee for General Assembly, the annual business meeting of the Unitarian Universalist Association. The population of people living without homes on the street was quite large there that summer and there was a man who would ask us for water or money every time we went into the door closest to the youth programming. Well, one evening on our way to an evening service, we noted, noticed an ambulance near the convention center. That man was lying next to it. My friends and I felt responsible, culpable. There we were enjoying a conference talking about largely esoteric things, while he struggled to find food, shelter, water, human affection. It was a time in my life I felt keenly aware of how great the need is and how limited my power is as an individual to meet that need. Now, my friends and I went on to collect spare change from other youth at GA that year. We had a pretty fun trip to a Kroger grocery store to buy non-perishable foodstuffs, and we donated them to a local Baptist food mission. The newspaper even wrote an article about it. And it was that experience that helped me understand in a deep way the importance not only of my own power, my own choices, my own agency, but of organizing our power so that our efforts have a deeper impact. Remember, friends, none of us is the last Jedi. And even if we were, the Jedi don't have a monopoly on the Force. The same power that has lifted us each up in our worst moments, the same power that has brought peace to flower from the strong roots of justice, the same power flows through you and through me and through every other person. May we honor it by organizing our power, sharing our abundance, and remembering that while our choices matter, the work for justice is not all on our shoulders. I've often heard it said that we are more powerful together than we are apart. But that means we have to be willing to first come together. It can be hard to pick one focus, one issue, one community partner with whom to go all in. But imagine what you could change in your town or city if your congregation did just that. Instead of focusing on 10 or 15 different things every year, what if we chose one as a congregation? What if we chose one as an entire Unitarian Universalist Association? It doesn't mean we have to abandon the issues or battles we think are most important, but it might mean that in our congregations and other communities, we have to learn to center work that's different from the issues or strategies we might most prefer. It might mean letting go of our need to wordsmith the language, to control the narrative, to be the ones making the calls. It might mean being willing to move where the force, the spirit, the justice energy is calling us to go instead of where we might want to go. I won't let them win! No! Men! Step to the ball! We have to retreat! I saved you. Tell me. 
That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. As Rose puts it, that's how we're going to win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. Now, our faith has long been about deconstruction. Deconstructing theology, deconstructing ideologies of oppression. And deconstruction is really important. It's, it's one of Fowler's stages of faith development, after all. We all go through that. Tearing apart the things that we've been taught and seeing if they really even make sense. But it's not the end-all, be-all. It's not the goal. We can't just tear down everything that isn't working or is harmful. We also have to be about constructing a positive faith for ourselves, about building a just world for all. As we see in Star Wars, destroying the Empire wasn't enough. Without a working government and society, the door was open for the First Order to rise. And Rose is right. Destroying the First Order won't be enough either. It certainly won't be enough for Finn to sacrifice himself just to destroy one weapon, however powerful. In our own world, we see this too. Even anti-racism, as important and powerful as it is, is not the end goal. It's a piece of the journey. It's about deconstructing the systemic, powerful, oppressive force of racism in our world and also its accomplices, classism and poverty and homophobia and so many others. But that work has to be paired with a positive vision for the world of which we dream. There's a wonderful UUA curriculum about this very thing. It's called Building the World We Dream About, which is both an anti-racist workshop, but also one that addresses this very issue by pairing anti-racist work with the work of building the beloved community. In the proposed eighth principle, we see the same pairing. Not just anti-racist and anti-oppressive work, though that matters, but also the vision of beloved community. And let me take a moment to tease that out. We use that term a lot, beloved community. Martin Luther King Jr. used it. He got it from the philosopher Josiah Royce. What does that mean? Well, if I can try to sum it up in a few sentences, it means something like a vision of people living and being together in peace with the presence of justice. It means an end to oppressions of all forms. It means the flourishing of each human life and all of our lives together. And I'm not sure that any of us living in a world as broken as this one is right now can fully grasp what that would even look like. But the good news is we don't have to. We can get closer to it each and every day through our own and our collective actions. As a parent, I have to remind myself sometimes of this, that it's not enough to stop a bad behavior, not enough to tell a child to cut it out. Though sometimes, of course, that's all we have the time and energy for. We have to pair that with showing our children a positive vision of who they can be, what they can do, what hopes and dreams we have for them, what hopes and dreams of their own they can nurture. Life isn't about avoiding the bad stuff, it's about making sure we save and create the good stuff too. So don't just tell me what you're doing to oppose racism, tell me too what you're doing to promote your vision of beloved community. Don't just tell me what you're fighting, tell me about what you love and how you're working to save that. Because friends, we don't win just by fighting what we hate. We win by saving, by creating what we love. So may it be.
Gonna keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. Gonna keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. Gonna keep on moving forward. We have basked in the warmth and beauty of this flame and this community. As the chalice flame is extinguished, let us carry its glow within. Let us kindle new sparks within these walls and beyond. Friends, this is how we're going to win. Not by fighting what we hate, but saving what we love. We have to oppose racism, work against all oppressions. Yes, absolutely. But never forget the reason why we do this. To save, to nurture, to create the world of which we dream. Our mission is to go and love the hell out of the world. And so our worship is ended and our service begins. <laughs>